as you can see there, I've got my the, the four packages on my bench, but now I'm on my like where I program, which is not the same place. So I need to move around and, and do stuff. Um, it's probably going to be boring for most of you, but I had some kind of intro for like people who never heard of like Famicom sound chips, uh, Famicom mappers and, and, and whatnot. Uh, so I previously made a little silly video, uh, basically for, for people that don't know, the Famicom is the Japanese NES, well, in fact, the NES is the North American Famicom. And when they brought the NES over to North America, they changed one thing in the hardware that they never used before in Japan, which I'll show you right away. Got a media source here. So if I play that. So that's the old, perhaps the oldest cart that I have. Uh, as you see, it's not gold plated. It's, yeah, that's lead. I'm just gonna go back a little. So you see the big the little 45 there? That's that's a jumper where the audio goes through from the 2A03 back into the console. And bonus, you have YN2211. <laughs> ROM chips and 2212 uh, with uh, that the little number after is the ROM contents. I don't know why the thing is different. Maybe this it's a pinout difference between the PRG and the CHR. I should check it again. Uh, the first product that actually used the audio, if I'm not mistaken, is the Famicom Disk System. So that's the first time that the link was severed, the jumper was severed in the cartridge, and that we uh, were able to hear some new voices. In fact, in the FDS, there's only one. Uh, I've measured the Sensu uh, with the VRC6, uh, Esper Dream 2, and Madara. I'll use the VRC6 chip. I recorded this footage a long time ago and I'm quite glad to be able to finally use it. Uh, these are various uh, Namco 163s, which I also have. I don't know why, I just wanted to show them all because I don't know, I bought them. They're expensive, so hey, I'll show them. <laughs> yeah, I got a whole bunch of them. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, MMC5, whole bunch of them. And this little mapper here. I won't go through what is a mapper. There's plenty of resources of links onto it. Uh, La Grange Point with the VRC7, which you can also find in Tiny Toons Adventure 2. Uh, but in this case, the audio is not hooked up. But it's quite convenient <laughs> as a means to get access to a VRC2. And finally, gimmick. This is the uh, subject of the video tonight. This includes a Sunsoft 5B, aka YM6630B, and this chip is pretty rare. So if you have a nerd like me who likes to collect sound chips and analyze them, in order to get this <laughs> chip, you need to buy this cartridge. So the big problem is that if you go on eBay, I'm just gonna head my browser, Second, won't be long. If you go on eBay, I mean, right now the cheapest one is roughly five hundred dollars. There is quite a few of them. If you get the box one, it's even more. And so, yeah, I didn't want to buy one originally because that's darn, darn too expensive. So, a great resource for any sort of cartridge hacker or historian is the the absolutely amazing Nescart DB database, and where you have access to uh, like pictures of PCBs of all sorts that are in the consoles. Is there a question? Mappy kids? Yeah. I'm not seeing the full chat. Oh man. OBS is very bad. I want to scroll down and I can't see the latest entries. Anyway, move this back here. Man, I need to practice. So, since I'm a cheapskate, well, it's a, well, not being cheap, not wanting to buy a $500 card just for one sound chip as you want to analyze. So I looked around and wow, Gremlins 2 has one as well. Although I thought, <laughs> big problem is, I don't know if that's a fluke or something, because the only time that I've ever saw a 
Sunsoft 5B and a Gremlins cart was on this website because I bought one, opened it, no Sunsoft 5B. Opened another one, no Sunsoft 5B. After five, and I guess they were like $30, $40 each, and I should have bought a gimmick. Well, you only know after. Now that I got two gimmicks, and why I need two is because uh, for Chipsynth FC, which has been in the making for like 10 years, but we, we take our time, we do it well, we, we try to fine tune stuff. We get bored, we work on another one. Anyway, that's not the subject of the video. I need to have at least two copies of each sound file, sound chip that I analyze in case I say I find something weird and is it because this particular chip has a problem? So by having a second one, it's kind of obvious, but having a second $500 gimmick... <sighs> well, I, can't, I did it anyway, so I bought two gimmicks and all of a sudden a new discussion appears uh, that you can make reproductions of gimmicks using either a 5A, which is something you typically find in, in, in Gremlins carts, or if you have a 5B from a cart that I didn't know have had some, which is, I'm going to pronounce it horribly, Dodge Danpei, which is dodgeball based on a... It's a game based on a anime that talks about dodgeball. I didn't play a game, I just knew the, the thing was in there. So you can either modify uh, that cart, uh, depending if the cart has a 5B or not, because it can have some, or you can just like, don't care if it has a 5B, and you can really put a, like they actually took a AY uh, 380980, uh, I have problems saying numbers in English, I need to practice, 8912. But uh, that's not exactly uh, the same thing. Uh, the envelopes are not the same. The volume is not going to be the same. You can manage that. But essentially in, in, uh, in, in Gimmick, which by the way, if you haven't heard Gimmick, uh, I have it here. So I've made a fresh recording. Um, so that's the full mix. I'm going to do the heresy of panning it. And this is just a 2A03. And this is the accompaniment, which is done what with the Sunsoft 5B. Uh, this was made with a modified Famicom with split, uh, so pin 45 and 46 that we saw originally as a jumper. Uh, I'll put that to two separate uh, things. So, do I have something else I need to show in this before I go on the bench and hack on some packages? So, if you wrote some things, I can't see it. For some reason, the chat is stuck to the first, the first entries, um, sadly. But if you put questions there, don't worry, I'll, I'll read them after. For closing the chat. No, I won't. Okay, whatever. Uh, so now, I might have something else to say. No. Showing everything. So let's get to the bench and open up some packages. Just coming next door. Oh, just a second. Something is in the way in the stream. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I should have everything now. I'm still here. See my hand. Okay. Four packages. First, <laughs> I'm going to show you. I wasn't kidding, okay? I initially bought a bunch of Gremlins cards. One Gremlin, one Gremlin. Uh, what else do I have? Gremlin, Gremlin, Gremlin. I have three here, sun painted boxes, and none of them had five Bs in them. Then I bought my two real gimmicks, just right here. That's my last remaining one. Nice little gimmick. I don't know if that's upside down. Uh, it should be okay. Anyway, that's my precious. Keep it here. And I bought a whole lot <laughs> of those dodgeball carts. And so far, I bought 20 of them. 
luckily there were like five bucks each at that time uh, back before covid where shipping for some reason was quite cheap but my favorite uh, Japanese reseller so I bought 20 and opened them, them all and five of them had five B's what I did with it I gave two to other researchers and the remaining two were used to make a repro I got another one back there so just very cheaply put <laughs> a sticker on there and I have an e version so I can run uh, my live nest program that's modified for 5b so I can like whack registers and do stuff but there may be more so yeah uh, first soon is really looking forward to get um, a 5b and I could send them one but then it, it, it'll stretch my my um, how much I'm, I'm willing to risk breaking them or have not having enough for research. But anyway, I figured that if I already five, found four, five of them, well, the other reason is I've already like fully made uh, a complete uh, repro out of them. So that's work I've already done. So I bought four other ones and uh, we need to unpack them now. So, that's, so the statistics is one on four. One out of four um, carts supposedly has one. So if I get none of them here, that's going to be a bit sad. Start with this one, Retro Games Japan. It's kind of stressful. So this is the same technique that was uh, used in that tutorial. Uh, since it's live, I won't take all my time. And I've already got plenty of them. It's not an expensive cart, so... Some of them are easy to open, some of them are harder. That one's going to open quite away, right? Easily. Dude. Moment of truth. Do I have... I don't want to break it. Okay. FME7. So... That was to be expected. At least if I have one, I'd be happy. Another one. And by the way, there's no way that I've that I've seen to uh, dif differentiate a Sunsoft 5B bearing cart with a normal one just with pictures alone. It's the same label. There's no like under. Well, it's it's kind of rare that they take pictures of the underneath. And anyway. It's the same PCB, I think, that they use. Or they use the Gremlins ones, I don't remember. <clears throat> I'm completely inaccurate. I've been, been skating today, so imagine a near 50-year-old guy on a skate park uh, doing crazy stuff and falling. That, that's me, so I'm not getting younger. Just make a horrible noise. Sometimes they come off easy, sometimes they don't. I didn't like the sound of that. FME 7. Two out of two. Please, 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 please. Weird packaging. What the hell is that? There are still retro lovers now, then. This, is, this one comes from the US. I'm the world's biggest collector of Dutch MP cards. No kidding. No, 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 no. It we it, it'll be a very boring stream if I don't find one. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I'll let you judge. That's enough to. Probably many of you are cringing, but there's no screws on this. They didn't put screws. It, it wasn't made to be opened. 
Oh, you bastard. FME7. Doesn't look good, but at least the last package with some other goodies in there, so it's going to be exciting. It's not that I don't try. I need to get a better tool. Just a second. Uh, just when I need my cutter, I can't find it. Anyway, I'll just take this blade. It's going to be fine. This is from my favorite seller in Japan for you. Really, you get amazing deals on all sorts of cards. So, I didn't just want to go there and buy uh, one, the one Danpei that they had. So, I bought a few stuff. N64, F1, World Grand Prix. I don't know if it's good. I don't care. It was like $1 Nintendo 64 cart. <laughs> a bunch of stuff I didn't have. Uh, I don't know. I, I just love Famicom and Japanese Super Famicom cartridges. Super Bombman. And Kirby that I don't have. And Tetris 2. And what did I get for the Famicom? I don't remember. Well, I know one of them. Yeah, very cheap. Two very cheap Namco. 163's one, a Mickey Mouse game because why not last last one <laughs> this is a very expensive hobby well in my case it's not really hobby it's half hobby half business but I don't make I don't know where one starts and the other ends I guess FME 7! I'm sorry. I didn't make it. Oh, well. 